Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today I'll be walking you guys through this week's weekly news update. There's a ton of different things to cover, especially with how much Riot has announced these past few weeks. Whether it's a look at some beautiful new skins, new champions, crazy events, or whatever it may be, here at ProGuides, we've got you covered. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned until the end so you don't miss out on any important updates now and in the future. Nonetheless, let's hop right in. Starting us off strong, we're going to be taking a look at a few of the skins that will be hitting the live servers. While it's too late to actually provide feedback, it's not too late to get hyped up for this amazing new skin line. If you're a fan of Blood Moon, then look no further as Ren has decided to add in the new Snow Moon line. This amazing skin series features the same demonic style and red highlights of Blood Moon while contrasting them with a nice snowy thematic. Joining this new line will be Alawi, Kane, and Caitlyn. Each of these skins seem to be valued at $13.50 and will offer up to 8 chromas for you to choose from. Unfortunately, these will not have any additional new items such as icons or ward skins. Our last skin doesn't stop here because hitting the live patch, you'll be seeing the all new Ashen Knight Pantheon skin. This, similar to Ashen Knight Pike, is going to be an exclusive skin that is unlocked through the Mythic Shop. With it, you'll be awarded a matching icon. If you're willing to spend the extra points, you can also get the Ember Woken Chroma with an enhanced icon. Speaking of Mythics, Riot is going to be testing out the new Mythic Chromas. For the first subject, we've got Final Boss Vagar. This new style of mythic item will be released every two patches and with it, it won't change any VO or SFX, but it will give you a new color palette for both the champion and their abilities. This one for Vagar will change him to be a nice pearl and purple color while adding a darker blue hue to all of his abilities so don't miss out. Finally, we've got a ton of new emotes for you to collect while announcing that the Essence Emporium is coming soon. Featured in it will be a ton of skins, icons, and from our understanding, a few emotes as well, so be sure to save up. Before we continue on to our next big update, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of unique guides from just some of your favorite professional players. If courses and lessons aren't really your thing, then don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGuides family. Anyway, let's get back into the video and dive into what you're all here for. It took ages, but Riot has finally revealed a ton more information about the upcoming Star Guardian event. This event has as much effort put into it as a previous harrowing event, and it hopefully is a step up from that. To hype it up, Riot released a teaser that features a ton of new hints for the new SG skins, while also adding some callbacks to the older ones. Alongside this amazing video, they also released a new Star Guardian theme that was worked on by an entire team to truly capture the power of an orchestra and Riot's music team. Diving right into the important part, we've got the all new skins that they announced. Let's quickly go through each one and don't forget, this is labeled as a first release so there still may be more to come after. Starting us off strong, we got Star Nemesis Fiddle 6. Our beloved fiddle mains don't have to wait anymore as they've finally been blessed with a new skin that they were promised last year. Well, the wait is worth it as this amazing splash art is extremely detailed and shows how evil Fiddle 6 is and how he's going to be fighting against the Star Guardians. This skin features all new animations and some great colors so we hope that these chromas will be just as good. Next up we've got Sona whose splash shows her fighting in the Star Guardian city with interesting monsters floating in the background. Her and her green companion look to defend the city with an amazing color scheme and an overall awesome skin. If you're a fan of Sona, you'll definitely enjoy the animations that were all made for her different auras. Following Sona, we've got Kaisa who unfortunately doesn't have a release splash art as of now. Her gameplay preview, however, features a great display of her bright pink uniform that offers some impressive and fitting sound effects. It makes us wonder how good the chromas for this skin are going to look like due to how bright it is. With her skin, she's also getting a visual effect that can be activated to show all game or just when she's shopping which is a fairly unique mechanic. Moving on we've got Echo, who is a seemingly random addition to the Star Guardian universe. While it is cool that he got a skin, it doesn't seem to really fit him as well as it could have. I feel like Urgot fits this a little bit better. Anyway, he sports a blue and orange uniform to match his new, star-based abilities. To all of our Echo fans, you'll also be surprised to find out that he will be getting a Prestige variant that thankfully doesn't feature random white and gold accents. Instead, this gives Echo some brighter colors that really pair well with his abilities while also grinding him some nice golden shimmer. Overall, it's a beautiful representation of what a Prestige skin should look like while significantly outshining the regular version. In the second part of the Star Guardian event, we are expecting to see Akali, Realm, Talia, possibly Quinn, and what seems to be Morgana. These will likely be released one patch after the initial release of Star Guardian, so keep your eyes peeled for some additional previews. While we're still on the topic of Star Guardians, the event is rumored to have a PvE mode similar to the previous Star Guardian event. However, while this rumor had a ton of backing at first, it is slowly losing its footing as Riot continues to share the extra ultimates that they've added to Ultimate Spellbook. Hopefully they're posting things like this as a bluff so that we can again relive the amazing experience that is Riot's PvE modes. Who knows, maybe this event will have a far better one. 
finish off our announcements regarding the Star Guardian event, we also remind you all that it is said that this event will feature a visual novel. This novel is a similar one to The Spirit Blossom, but we're hoping it'll be taken one step further and be an improved version of what the Harrowing was. Can you imagine a large-scale Star Guardian event with an amazing visual novel? Oh well, we can always dream. Now that we're finally done with the Star Guardian event, let's not all forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what champion would you love to see in your favorite skin line? Personally, I would love to have Talon join the Demon Blade universe, which, is that even a universe? I don't know. It would be amazing to see how Riot would reimagine them with a new color palette and theme. Regardless of what your answers may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Anyway, let's get back into the video and dive into yet another huge part of our news update with the newest ADC, Nila. Pulling us back into the video, we've got all the information that you need for Nila, the Joy Unbound. This champion has been rumored for multiple patches now and has been constantly hinted at by Riot. Through TF and Graves' storyline, as well as a few pieces of art, we knew that Nila was going to be using water for something in her kit. And boy, were we surprised to see that she's going to be using it as a water whip. Riot has stated that their next ADC was going to be one that was melee, and they're definitely going to meet those expectations. I don't know about y'all though, the water whip looks very like flaccid. I don't know how a water whip should look like, it just doesn't sit right with me. Anyway, her entire kit is built around empowering her and her support in the bot lane while fulfilling the dream of being a melee skirmisher in the marksman role. Let's go through each of her abilities and how they can be effective and letting her live the dream as an ADC. Taking a look at Nila's passive, it will empower the healing and shielding abilities of both Nila and her nearby allies. This will provide a small bonus heal or shield. Alongside this, when Nila last hits a minion, her and her nearest ally will gain the normal amount of XP plus half the experience that would normally be lost sharing. This passive is essentially Riot's way of tying Nila to the bot lane, but we're not sure how balanced that new XP mechanic will be. Nila's Q, Formless Blade, has her strike in a lane which will damage all enemies hit. This will also empower Nila's attack range and attack speed while also giving her basic attack splash damage. Quite literally, splash damage. The passive of this ability has Nila ignore some armor and heal some of the damage dealt which scales with crit chance. This is likely to be her bread and butter and will solidify her as a crit carry thanks to this passive effect. Moving on to her W, Jubilant Veil, Nila will shroud herself which will grant movement speed, reducing incoming magic damage, and cause her to dodge incoming basic attacks. She can protect an ally with his veil for a reduced period of time. This ability will allow Nila to take favorable trades while also being a little bit unfair thanks to it being a mimic of Jax's Counter-Strike ability. As for her E, Slipstream, it'll provide her with a Yasuo or Samara-like dash. This can store two charges, and similar to Samara, she can Q during the animation to cause a wave to follow and deal additional damage. This will be her primary engage tool, so that she can weave in and out of fights at a moment's notice. Finally, her ultimate known as Apotheosis will have her lash her whip in a small area around her while also pulling them into the center. This will heal her for part of the damage dealt and turn excess healing into a shield. While the ultimate is fairly underwhelming, it will give her a new way to sustain when she inevitably groups up around too many enemies. Pair this with her EEQ combo, and she's able to heal for a ton of damage while also staying fairly protected. Overall, Nila's kit may not be the most unique since we see many repeats of other champions, but it does seem like a fun combination. This champ may seem like a balancing nightmare for Riot, but since we don't know much about the numbers yet, we can only hope that she doesn't become the next 400 years champion. Speaking of which, we purposefully left out Nila's skin in the Star Guardian segment. Nila will be joining the skin line as her release kit, and it features her in a traditional white, green, and purple uniform with sleeves and a skirt. Her whip is a vibrant pink color, and overall, it looks kind of amazing. The skin line may not seem like it would fit a Monster Hunter that well, but Nila makes it work for her fluid movements and great attitude. Before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So, what are you waiting for? Join up! Anyway, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few points that we're going to be going through on our patch rundown. Last but certainly not least, we've got Sivir's rework, which is honestly looking to improve Sivir's identity as a champion. It'll be hitting the PvE soon and is set to hit the live servers around the same time as part 1 of the Star Guardian event. This rework looks to solidify Sivir's identity as an AoE team fighting crit marksman. It's going to adjust each of her abilities so that she can better suit this role. Her passive is going to have her movement speed changed from a flat 2 seconds to it being decaying. In addition to this, it will now scale the attack speed from 55 to 70. For her Q, this is going to be far more reliable when it's thrown out in exchange for a slightly less reliable return. It will also have its damage scaled better over time. Q's base damage is being changed from 35 to 95 to 50 to 115. Its total AD ratio will now be a flat 0.7, and its cooldown will scale from 12 seconds down to 10. Alongside this, it will also have a 0.25 second cast time that will slow down and scale down to 0 based on your attack speed. 
tilt up its damage scale, and it'll also have its crit chance up by 100% bonus damage. Key's mana cost is being lowered, and its outward missile speed is being increased by 100, while its return speed is being reduced by 150. Looking at Sivir's W, it's going to help empower her damage by providing an attack speed buff that will now last for 4 seconds. Its bounce range is being increased, and while it can no longer bounce infinitely, it can now double back and hit the same enemy twice. To make sure that its damage doesn't run rampant, it'll also have its total AD scaling reduced to a flat 0.3. Sivir's E has been removed as her main source of mana for her kit, but it will now grant her healing and movement speed when used successfully. This change is worrying to quite a few players, as it functions as Sivir's primary mana sustainability unless he builds here and lethality items. Finally, Sivir's ultimate is being changed to grant her more personal power, while also giving a little bit to allies. It will no longer grant initial movement speed burst nor attack speed. However, its duration has been increased and the movement speed will refresh upon takedowns. Plus, Sivir's auto attacks during this ultimate now reduce her basic ability cooldowns by 5 seconds. Overall, Sivir's new kit seems to really embrace her AoE damage theme, and we hope it's enough to finally bring Sivir back into the solo queue meta as well as the competitive scene. That being said, her laning phase seems like it'll struggle significantly, so let's hope everything goes well on the PvE. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, but don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.